All right, everyone, welcome back. Uh, if you're in the Tuesday, Thursday class, I skipped the calculus question when I went through it. If you are in the Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, I think because the document ca camera kept cutting out on me, uh, I missed it for you as well. So I'm going to go back and hit this problem. And it is after 5 on a Friday, so I'm going to go kind of quick because I want to get out of here. Um, we can always go back in further detail later on. So we are given the function of the, of the uh, we're given the position function of an electron that gives us the position x at any point in time t. So plug in a time, you get its position. And it asks, at what time in the future does the electron momentarily stop? When does it stop? When its velocity equals zero. How do we get velocity from the position function? Well, you may remember that the velocity equals the derivative of the position function. So d over dt equals 14t squared plus 5t plus 20. If I were to expand that out further, I could say this is in ri ridiculous, uh, well, not ridiculous, but very high detail. So I'm just differentiating each term individually. Um, so the derivative of the first term, 14t squared, is 14 times 2, bringing the 2 down, times t to the 2 minus 1, plus the derivative of this, which is 5, times 1, which is the exponent, times t to the 1 minus 1 power. Derivative of the constant is 0. You'll have to take my word for that. So v equals 2 times 14, which is 28, times t to the 2 minus 1, which is just t, or t to the first power. And that is 5 times t to the 1 minus 1, which is t to the 0th power, and anything to the zeroth power is just one, so I'll leave it out. So you had a certain amount of points for recognizing that you had to take the derivative. You had a certain amount of points for actually computing the, de the derivative. Again, that's just dx dt. And then you had a certain amount of points for recognizing that you had to set this equal to zero to find the point at which the particle momentarily stops. So now I'm going to just solve for t, solve for that time. Um, at what time in the future? Minus 5 from each side. So 28t equals negative 5. And divide each side by 28. t equals negative 5 over 28. And that will be in seconds. But I told you you didn't have to worry about the units on this problem. Now that is the answer. Some, uh, at least one of you, I think, may, no, it's two of you, I think, came up with the, this astute observation that I asked for what time in the future does this, the electron momentarily stop. The time here is negative. So the answer then is that at no time in the future, does v equals zero because this happens in the past okay I didn't I didn't count off any points if you did not write that all I cared about was that you were able to solve for t it that happened when I went and uh, took a problem and changed the numbers and it came out to be negative and, and a couple of you caught that uh, it asked for the time in the future um, <clears throat> what would a negative time actually mean well, if you have some function, um, I, I don't know, let's say it looks like that. That's a weird old function. Um, no, you know, I take that back. Let's draw a function that looks very similar to what we're working with here, which would be a quadratic. Um, Maybe it looks something like, I don't know, like that. 
So you are finding the derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line, and the point at which the derivative equals zero is going to be here at negative t. Now, what does negative time mean? Well, you choose the origin wherever you want to. Say I want to stop my, my, my stopwatch now. Maybe I want to stop it now. <laughs> wherever you choose the zero point is arbitrary. Um, it just, usually it's assumed that the zero point is right now and at any time in the future is going to be positive. But in this case, we found a negative time. Okay, I hope that all makes sense to you and I hope you uh, understand how to do that again in the future. Uh, see you soon.